So welcome to Peaky Power, and today we're just going to cover the basic differences between a direct injection a diesel fuel supply system and an indirect injection a diesel supply fuel system. So we're going to go through the very basics. Uh, as modern systems develop, each system varies and improves and changes. So there's going to be lots of, generally speaking, when it comes to these systems, but I'll do my best as I go through. Uh, so to start with the basics, we have a fuel pump. Fuel pump here, and a fuel pump here. This is direct injection, high pressure fuel pump. This is still a high pressure, but in comparison to this, uh, a low pressure a diesel injection pump. They're both driven by a main shaft that goes in, which is usually turned by the cam belt. Later systems uh, have been turned by the camshaft. The initial difference is, is this runs to a couple of hundred bar pressure, and these latest systems, these run into the thousands of bars of pressure. Uh, a fuel pump like this could easily produce 1800, 1700-ish a bar of fuel pressure at the fuel rail. So there's the first rather large difference. The second main difference between these two fuel pumps uh, is this one just simply creates a pressure. It doesn't actually determine when each injector fires. However, this fuel pump, an early Bosch fuel pump that runs on XUDs, etc., well, this determines also the point at which each injector fires by the delivery valves that are on the end. So, on the end of each, uh, at the end of the uh, injection pump, there's four delivery valves on this one. So it's a four-cylinder engine. Some are six, uh, and that would obviously be a six-cylinder uh, engine. And each of the delivery valves runs via a pipe to one of the injectors. And as the shaft in size rotates, not only do the vanes inside create the pressure it requires, but they also deliver fuel via the head, via a shaft in here, to each valve as it rotates, as you can imagine, and then each one goes to each cylinder and creates the firing order. As opposed to our direct injection here, which simply has basically just one output. This output goes to a point on the fuel rail, which happens to be on here on this fuel rail. And then, because this is a four cylinder, you have four uh, outputs from the fuel rail that then go to each injector. So this injector rail, although it doesn't look much, this holds, you know, this holds all the fuel pressure. So whether that be a thousand or fifteen hundred or two thousand bar or more on modern systems, which is why we get some systems called, like this called the common rail injection. Now older systems also had common rail, you know, we, we're talking old, old systems, uh, but often when we speak of common rail, we're talking about these uh, modern fuel injection systems, these modern diesels. So there's the initial differences. Uh, so we've got pressure, uh, the way the timing is done, so each time the fuel injector fires, and then we go on to the injectors. Uh, now this is where the differences again in control happen. So while an ECU is required to control all this, some of these systems later on had ECU, since there's a little sensor on the top, but generally speaking these were completely mechanical. Uh, for instance, uh, inside one of the top of this is one of these, which is the governor and the throttle, and there's a bunch of springs you can see which control everything. So in comparison to ECU control, it's all about springs, and you can modify these little things for them to rev harder. So it's all about nuts and bolts, as opposed to this where it's on the laptops. But of course there are some advantages and disadvantages. You see these are much more expensive, they require a better filtering system, and for instance all this stuff that I have out here really is kind of useless until I put it into an ultratonic cleaner because it's all exposed to dirt, as opposed to these which will kind of run on almost anything. When we get to the injectors, you'll notice quite a stark difference. Again, in size, this is actually quite a simple injector, really a simple system. It has a needle point injector there, and inside is a spring or two-rate spring, and as the fuel pressure reaches a certain point when it gets to this injector, it opens, uh, it releases the seat, and the injector fires the fuel. Because these are indirect injection, the head design is also different. So these fuel injectors sit, and this little point here sits right onto the top of the cylinder, so as the cylinder comes up, it fires onto the cylinder. Hence the pistons are often different on the direct injection, that's the indirect injection. Indirect injection, the piston comes up and it's got a flat head to it, and a direct injection system, well that's a little bit different. Let me show you what happens when it goes wrong. <laughs> so we have a valve in the middle of ours, that's from the lemon, but you can see there's a bowl in the middle which helps create a swirl effect to help the fuel and the air mix. As opposed to the XUDs, the old designs, the old heads, the indirect injection, well they had a little port, a little bit like that bowl, inside the head with a little gap. So as the piston came up to the head, all the air swirled inside, it injected into the into the, uh, the sort of swirling chamber, the swirl pot, 
and then came back out and exploded in bang, pop, wallop, and your piston went out the side of the engine. So these modern injectors, as you can see, they have a plug on the top, and it's the ECU that fires each one. So there's a common amount of pressure that's supplied to each of the injectors, and the idea is that the ECU, know, ECU knows exactly when to fire each injector and for how long. Whereas that's all determined by springs inside the pump. Which of these is better? Well, it's time for a brew to think about that. There's many ways we could weigh up this question. And there's going to be lots of heated arguments, perhaps in the comments section, about this. There's already been many heated arguments over the years since these new systems came out. When we're talking about indirect injection, there's not many arguments that Lucas make a fuel pump that could be run on the same engines, and they are not as good. These are far superior for a number of reasons. The tunability, uh, the general reliability, um, although there are many Lucas pumps doing hundreds of thousands of miles, and also the fact that you can run these pumps on many different things. So, for instance, you could run it on vegetable oil or many different diesels. You could even run it on an engine oil. I've heard all sorts of fuels be run through these pumps and they do, well, just fine. Sometimes a little seal here goes, but generally speaking, you can basically just chuck some chip fat in them and you can run away and drive quite happily along, smelling like the local chip shop, but very cheap on fuel. So many people do that. You couldn't do that with these modern systems. You could for a short while, but no doubt some part of this very sensitive system would fail. However, is this system better? Well, yes, it's more modern. And whilst a lot of modern things we like the nostalgia of the old things, it is superior. It creates higher fuel pressures, which enable you to run more power without stresses and strains on springs and levers. And there's more flexibility with the tuning process. So you can fire more fuel in this system in a shorter period of time, which is obviously better for combustion and atomization of the fuel. However, of course, if you just like playing with springs and spanners, you don't like laptops, well, this is the system for you. But it is dying out because parts are dying out, cars are dying out, and so parts are getting a little more difficult to get hold of. Parts are more expensive with these systems, but generally if the system is looked after, it is plenty reliable. And if you prefer laptops rather than get your hands dirty, well, this is the system for you. Remaps can be had, you can download them, plug them into your car and suddenly have 50% more torque and 20% more power just from a remap because of the potential of these direct fuel injection systems. Which is why now modern petrols have gone the same way with high pressure direct injection fuel systems. And if you check out my project up here, uh, Kev, we're using an old Mini and we're gonna put a modern engine in it with direct fuel injection, just because this is the way basically technology is moving. I don't want to bore you too much. I still love the old system, the indirect injection systems. It's how I started my apprenticeship. It's I've had many cars on this, and maybe one day I'll end up with another one again. But for now, I'm moving ahead with the times with modern fuel injection. I've seen the benefits. I've felt the benefits in my gut when I put my foot down. And generally speaking, it's it's the future. And sometimes we just have to go with it. We like the nostalgia of the old things, and we like the fact we can run chip fat. But until the need to do that again. I'll be with this system. Now I spoke very generally about facts and figures uh, that are general, so please don't slate me if you know other things about this. If you do, well, put them in the comments. We're all here to learn. Every day's a school day. But I've been asked many times what the basic differences are and which is best. Well, you can argue all day about those facts. In my personal opinion, the more modern systems are better. However, they do have their issues at times. Generally speaking, the repair factor is, is, is more costly. But that's getting better as companies and uh, people start businesses rebuilding such systems as this rather than replacing it for new. New pumps, thousands of pounds, a rebuild, 300 quid, for instance. So uh, kudos to them and I thank them for doing such things, those people investing in the kit to do those things and we applaud them and hope that happens more often. Of course, it all can still go wrong. Check out my lemon project and things can blow up. Ironically, that was mechanical. So thanks for watching to this point. I hope I haven't bored you too much, uh, but uh, please check out Piggy Pal the other videos. Sometimes I have frequently asked questions that I answer. So why don't you ask a question and I'll see if I can answer it with another factual video. Usually I'm just spannering and doing stuff on daily cars and making stuff go faster. So please check out those videos too. Any suggestions welcome, any comments welcome. Keep them polite and kind and don't swear. Thank you. Piggy out.